Okay, so this is likely to be a very unprofessional video, but to make the muzzle for the little gnomey dogs, or dog gnomes, or whatever, you cast on just regular. So you do the gathering after. And I like to do 13. You can do anywhere from, I don't know, 10 to 15, depending on what you feel like, or if you use fatter yarn or something like velvet. I think I only did 10 or 11 when I did a velvet one, um, but I didn't like the velvet so much for what I was doing. But I tend to like 13 pretty well. Now, if you're going to try and do a collie, then you'll probably want a more. And it'll still be kind of a little fat. But, so it's just 13. Okay. And then it's just the neat cast off where you pick it up with your needle. If I sound funny, it's because I'm actually holding the phone under my chin. <laughs> I'm not at my home, so I'm making lemonade, hey? My whole life is making lemonade lately. Try not to pull it off the last thing. Pink. So you'll have already made your gnome body, hopefully. I made my gnome body, but I haven't stuffed it yet, so I'll be pausing it to stuff it and do it. Savlabot. I use Savlabot's video for all the gnome bits. Um, I was thinking you could add ears and, like, Leave the face smooth and do like a cocker spaniel, but I haven't done it yet. Maybe I'll do that on this one. It's a good color for a cocker. It'd be a good color for a cocker. Maybe I'll try that with this one. But normally I just do the beard and call them a Newfie gnomes because noofs kind of look like that anyway. So then you have a thing and you're just going to do the gathered circle bit. Okay, so gather it in a circle. Sew up the center tight. Gather up the other side. So you're just making a disc. I'm only making the video because this is a pain for me to write out. I don't write out things so well. Okay, so. Tighten that up a bit. Then you're gonna flatten it. I usually Tie it together. Okay, so there's the thing. So I'm gonna smooth it out a bit. And then I'm gonna go see what I did with the nose. There it is. Okay, so I got this nose and the nose is about, you know, yay big. It's about, it's about a half inch, I think, from here to here in the wide part. So I, depending on my mood, sometimes I stick it right through the center and sometimes I stick it right above the center. It kind of depends because see, if you put it above the center, you get more muzzle, see? And you get a flatter top of the muzzle. So usually 
I do it more that way, even though this down here is the mouth. But sometimes I put it right in the middle. It really just depends on your mood and your the character you want your pup to have. And then I kind of look at it and I see where the shorter, because it's even though you put it in the middle, part of it is shorter. So I usually put the shorter side at the top because I want this to be fuller on the bottom. And then you, so it's sticking through, I put it through the middle. Sorry, now I've got a gnat or something. Yay, I got the door open. Okay, then you put your back on. Now you, I left both of these on. I usually do. So then what you're gonna do is you're basically gonna fold it in half, although it won't be quite evenly in half. And I usually start, I, I kind of like to make sure that I got it in half so that the nose is actually in the middle because if it's not in the middle, it kind of gets not so fun. Okay, so, so I'm gonna leave that, I just leave that there. I bring this up. I go around two, two. I don't, I don't really care what this looks like in the back because it's going to all be hidden. Basically, I'm just securing. Shoot, of course. Anytime you make a video, you get nuts. I've seen it with other people. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so basically all I do is I secure the middle section. Really? And I leave the ends open. And I'm just going to go back. And I'm just going to go back to the other side, okay, back to the middle. And you can put a knot if you want to make sure that it doesn't pull or whatnot, but I found that you don't really have to be that particular. This is basically just to hold it in place so that when you sew it, it kind of stays put. So I'm going to sew this end like this. And then again, I'm going to leave the end open. And kind of go to about yayish. It's really not very particular, which is probably why I like doing it. Okay, and just tuck the end because it's not really, it doesn't really need to be secure for anything. I just cut that one off. You can knot it if you want to. It's just a decoration. If it was a toy, I'd probably approach it differently, but since it's just it's got hot glue and everything. It's not a real toy. It's just for it's just for shelf setting. So then, see, and I still managed to get the nose crooked. So straighten them out. Try to get them more centered looking. So then, see, you basically got the shape and you fold it, and that's going to leave you a little place to stick your tongue. Okay, <laughs> not your tongue, but stick the tongue. <laughs> okay, so you've got them right there. You're folding it like that. Now you can, if you want to, it'll help, it can help you depending on how you feel. It depends on, depends on how wide you want it. So if you want it a little less wide and you want to be sure that you're not fighting with it while you're sewing it on, you can also come back in here and kind of just n tuck the middle part together a little bit. Just the inside edges, do you see? I do this sometimes depending on how I feel and how wide I want it. Because if you want it wider, you know, you just kind of let it go. And then it's ready to just sew on. And I will show you how I do that in just a second because I got to go stuff my bean bag. Okay, so here you got your muzzle. And then you have your little bean bag. Now, for the gnomes, she puts her nose right in the middle, but the nose isn't as big. I like to put my nose up a little higher because it gives a little more room for the beard. So not quite in the middle, but sort of a little bit, a little bit up. 
the bottom's almost in the middle when I do it. So you put your nose on there, kind of make sure that it's even, not, you don't want them like tilted like, like that. So make sure that it's not tilted. You got this piece of, you still have this piece of yarn coming out the back. And then I just kind of whip stitch it on, kind of try and get it underneath so that the, put that up there. I try to whip stitch it on. I try to get it underneath the nose and muzzle a little bit so it doesn't show. Although you're going to put the fur around and the hat so it shouldn't really matter even if it shows you a little bit. But you just kind of whip stitch it on around the edge. Okay. And while you're doing that, I kind of check it at the corners to see that I've kind of gotten it still where I want it. And go here and you can kind of stretch it out or narrow it as you go if you want to. So shape it as you sew it, kind of. Like say I wanna pull that out a little bit, make it a little fluffier looking, a little, little deep, a little broader in the cheek. And then I kind of go, sometimes I don't even go up into the middle, sometimes I do. It's really not, it's really not rocket science. You just kind of stick it on, sew it on there and make it look, you know, kind of the way you want it. So I'm gonna come up and go in here. Sometimes I skip the middle entirely. I just go under and come up again on the, on the other side and leave that void. And this, this one needs, see how he's narrower over here because he's been sewed down. So I'm gonna tuck this a bit so he's more even, more symmetrical. It's not as far out. And then, oops, you got to get your tail in there. So then when you do the, the rest of the gnome, the beard, you do it basically exactly the same as she does it on the video, except you just make it a little broader to fit around the nose. Um, you could make a paper pattern. That would be really efficient. Um, I didn't. I just sort of wing it with all my, all my guys. I just kind of hold up the fur and, you know, take out the middle third or whatever of the piece. So he's crooked, but it doesn't, I found that it doesn't really matter once you get it. So you can smooch it out and make him look like a chow like that if you want to. See, or you could, you could punch him in and make him look more bulldoggy if you wanted like that. If you, you could run up a thread and push him in and push him out. So you can shape him. You can make him look really, really collie-y if you make it really narrow. And if you wanted to, you could run some stitches in there just to shape him. See? So you can really kind of play with them. Um, I like them about like that. If you want to pooch it a little bit, you can just crunch it. So, so there. So he's got his nose on there. I usually, I don't usually have a hole like that up at the top, so I don't know what I did right there. That doesn't usually happen, but you know, the hat's still going to hide that. So it really, it really doesn't even, it's not going to matter. And like I said, if it was a toy, I'd be all kinds of more careful about stuff. But since it's not, and it's just going to sit on a shelf, it's not a big deal. So I don't really worry about it. So there you have the nose. I think I'm going to try the Cocker Spaniel thing. Oh, and then I just cut a little, a little shape, you know, of felt and stick it up under there. So I can show you that too. I'll just do it in a minute. Okie dokie. So, so I cut out my fur and basically you just sort of cut it out to fit. I'll, I'll lay it out. I will line it up and basically make it come to the top of the nose-ish and then I just sort of wing it, of course. The whole thing is kind of a, you're getting a theme that I'm, oops, I'm kind of winging it and doing a really bad job taping for you. Okay, so what I like to do so far now that I've discovered is um, I like to do it like this 
and do this part because I don't want the glue to cool and set up before I get it stuck where I want to. So I sort of, because, and of course I did a terrible job with that one, sort of bring it in and around that way a little bit on that. And then I do this part. Hopefully, I hope you can see, I've got this thing under my neck, so I can't really tell. Okay, and then I'm gonna glue this part and do the same sort of thing, bring it in and up and around the nose a little bit. Okay, and stick that down. And then I sort of lift up and do this part because when I was doing it the other way, I, it was very stressful and I always felt like I was getting glue everywhere and not sure that it was gonna land where I wanted it and stuff because I was going around the nose. So I do it more, I, I, think, I think this is the happiest I've been with it so far, so. Stick that up in there, boom, boom, boom. Snush it down. And you can see there's a little gap right there, but the nose, the, the, the tongue really covers that. This one's actually totally crooked too, which I really haven't done before, so yay. Perfect when I'm videoing. These parts were, I cut these out of the middle where I put the, where the nose gap was. And I just kind of round the edges a little bit because it seems nicer to me. Kind of line them up with the middle, kind of put them on there. So that's what I do. And ow, hot glue, hot glue. Ooh, that's actually the first time I burned myself too. Perfect. Perfect. Ow. That little hair is going to be nasty, so... Hopefully I didn't completely ruin it. I did ruin my finger a little. Ow. Okay. So there you have him like that. And he's looking pretty cute, even if he is a little crooked. But see, you can just kind of scrunch him in that little crooked part. And it's okay if he's not perfectly straight anyway. It kind of gives him a little bit of, at least to me, it's okay. You can be as particular as you desire, since it's going to be your puppy. And then for the tongue, last step, I do just a teeny bit of glue on there. Oh my gosh, and this one's stringy because it got hair in it. Yep, so it's going to, everything's going wrong because I'm bidding on They normally go very quickly and quite smoothly, but, you know. And you just kind of stick your finger right up there because there's a little hole right there where that note goes. It just settles right in the middle. And you can tilt it down if you want it more or less, like that. And then of course, if you've already made your hat, finish it off. And I'm gonna, I haven't done a pom-pom yet, but for the purposes of this video, I'm not gonna. And then you just situate your hat on there and tuck in all the, I'll, I'll finish off my ends, but and he'll have a pom-pom, but there he is. There you go. You have a little uh, gnome dog. Works for me. <laughs>